Our next case is uh, the case of Kansas versus Daub. This is a um, Court of Appeals of the State of Kansas. This is a, um, a, a case, a wrenching case, and, and, and one of the reasons this, this is included in your materials is because uh, as an attorney, you are going to be called upon in, in, in you may be called upon in, in different circumstances to, um, to consider some, some, some very uh, bad circumstances. You, you will be hearing testimony or you'll be in depositions and, or reading court records about terrible things that happen to people, particularly in criminal law. And um, one of the things that is important is, is, is if you are a, a person who is considering becoming a, a criminal attorney, it is advisable, not only do you obviously read these kinds of cases, but you, you do some research, some, some footwork, and, 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 and go to the courtroom, uh, talk to criminal lawyers, find out what's involved, be, because not everyone is, is, is cut out to be a criminal lawyer. But every law student must study criminal law, and that is where we are at, at, at this point. And this is a case uh, that, as I said, is, again, is, is pretty grim. Um, and the first question that you're going to be asked, or you may want to ask, is um, what is this case all about? What, is, what, what, the, the stick, what, what are we talking about here? There's a criminal statute, there are criminal statutes in Kansas that concern depraved heart murder and others that concern um, lesser included, less, lesser offenses of manslaughter. And this case is, is basically about a, a, a defendant who had an argument with his girlfriend and after this argument with his girlfriend, he started drinking uh, a lot of beer. And he continued drinking these beers, and then he decided that he wanted to take a drive in his pickup truck. So he drives the pickup truck, and he's driving at a high rate of speed, and um, uh, he accident during the course of his, his driving, he hits two parked cars, um, and he leaves the scene because, you know, he's been drinking. He doesn't want to be caught uh, at a scene of an accident having been drinking these beers. Two hours later, after striking these cars, he gets back into his pickup truck and he smashes into the rear end of a Cadillac in which nine-year-old Jamaica Smith was a passenger. And he, this, this causes a, a fatality. He kills, he kills the little girl smashes up the car, and uh, he leaves no, he doesn't stop, he, he leaves and uh, drives off. He just, he just leaves. Now, uh, several, you know, 15 hours after, after this terrible accident, the little girl died. Several months after this all happens, uh, his new girlfriend, finds out about this and goes to the authorities and he is prosecuted. Uh, so th the question the court has is uh, the, the charges. He was charged with number one, second degree depraved heart murder with lesser included offenses of involuntary manslaughter and vehicular homicide. He was charged with involuntary manslaughter while driving under the influence of alcohol and or drugs with a lesser included offense of driving under the influence of alcohol and or drugs, and three, leaving the scene of an injury. Uh, the jury found him guilty of all three primary offenses, but the court later dismissed the second offense of involuntary manslaughter. Uh, I forgot to, to add that uh, after he hit the first series of cars, uh, during that period of time before the fatality, he consumed alcohol and crack cocaine uh, during a three-hour period. So, I mean, these are, the, 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 these, these are the kinds of cases that you may often not only read in, in, in case law, in, in law school, but will encounter in real life. And I'm telling you that, if you're, that you really have to know for sure that, that, that you are the kind of person who can, who can uh, uh, proceed in, the, in these kinds of circumstances. And you know you're, you're going to say, well, you know this 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 guy has admitted all this. I mean, he's got the nerve to appeal. Well, yeah, there's 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 um, there's the, the the right to an appeal, and this person has an appeal. And the court in this case uh, 
is confronted with this appeal in which uh, he is uh, alleging that he was uh, improperly charged um, with a lesser with with, with uh, depraved heart murder. And the court says that we hold that depraved heart second degree murder requires a conscious disregard of the risk sufficient under the circumstances to manifest extreme indifference to the value of human life. Recklessness that can be assimilated to purpose or knowledge is treated as depraved heart second degree murder and less extreme recklessness is punished as manslaughter. Conviction of depraved heart second degree murder requires proof that the defendant acted recklessly under circumstances manifesting extreme indifference to the value of human life. This language describes a kind of culpability that differs in degree, but not in kind, from the ordinary recklessness required for manslaughter. And the court identifies you know, uh, other jurisdictions where uh, other courts have, have confronted these situations, and they uh, look to the uh, uh, vehicular statutes, the uh, depraved heart murder by vehicle in other jurisdiction uh, statutes, and there's a, a list of the, the things that other jurisdictions observe, including intoxication, speeding, near or non-fatal collisions shortly before the fatal accident, driving on the wrong side of the road, failure to aid the victim, failure to heed traffic signs, failure to heed warnings about reckless driving, prior record of driving offenses, drunk or reckless driving, or both. And uh, this case is, is one of those cases that, uh, that talks about um, uh, this kind of behavior. And um, there are other cases you encounter where, you know, you have situations where someone fires a, a, a gun into a crowd of people. He doesn't know any of these people, but he, he fires a gun into a crowd of people and, and one of the persons is killed. Uh, th that's the kind of example we're, we're talking about here, which is uh, considered to be depraved heart murder. And uh, in this particular case, what the court did was look at the statute and look at the factors that were involved in this particular case, and uh, uh, the, they view the evidence in light most favorable to the prosecution in their review of the, of the record. And uh, there's a laundry list of all the items, including intoxication, um, the, the non-fatal accident prior to this, the fatal accident, the excessive speed, the uh, you know, driving on the wrong side of the road, road apparently he did that too, uh, and, and other things. So you're, this, is, this is a case where you're going to um, be challenged to look at the statute, to find the fine distinctions between um, what is known as depraved heart murder, and uh, which is a, a higher, uh, a more severe crime than um, reckless manslaughter. Uh, you'll, you'll be looking at the statutes and, and identifying the facts, and you will be called upon to make those distinctions, and, and, and that is why this case is, is important, because it helps you to understand, it, it helps to train you as to how to make those distinctions. 